Good morning, guys. Welcome back to the Updike Family Homestead. I'm Kara, and today we're going to be making some homemade country peach preserves. Hey, y'all. We are the Updike Family, located in the mountains of Tennessee. We're excited to share our homesteading journey with all of you. From the farm to the table, we'll share the ins and outs, the ups and downs, from recipes and how-tos to our adventures of running a homestead. So come on in and join us. From our home to yours, welcome to the Updike Family Homestead. All right, so and let's talk ingredients first. Obviously, to make peach preserves, you're going to need some fresh peaches. And um, we lucked out. I had been wanting to get a bushel of peaches and just hadn't had time. We went out um, this past weekend and I picked up a full basket from one of our local farmers. I was so excited when I saw these things uh, because we're out. We That's one of the few jams that we use up completely um, before the next season comes around. I use peach preserves a lot of times, like when I'm cooking, I use them when I'm making stuffed pork chops or pork tenderloin. They are delicious um, when they're smothered on there. Bacon wrapped, oh, mm. we'll save that recipe for another day because today is obviously all about peaches. Now, I'm going to be going through this bushel and I'm going to be picking the ones that are almost um, not rotten. I don't, you know, obviously you don't want to use bad fruit, but if they're still, you know, kind of hard, then I want to make sure that I'm saving those for our fresh peaches uh, because, oh yeah, that's a nice soft one right there. It's not rotten, but it's soft. So I'm going to be setting that one to the side. Um, but you want to pick the ones that are super juicy, really um, kind of, you know, filled with a lot of soft spots. And I'm looking for 11 pounds of peaches. Now, obviously, this is a lot of peaches right here. So I'm just picking out the ones that are maybe close to going bad, but not quite. Now, with this bushel of peaches, let me just kind of share a couple of things. I'm going to be making... Um, of course, peach preserves, because that's my family's favorite. I'm going to be making some peach salsa as soon as I get a few more jalapenos off of our plants out in the big garden. And um, I'm going to be making just some canned peaches, just basic canned peaches that I'll use throughout the year for things like peach pie, peach cobbler, peach ice cream. That's another one of our favorites. Um, course I said let's see peach preserves basic canned peaches peach salsa oh bourbon peaches mmm those are really good too um, and then I will also save some to freeze for like peach smoothies um, and then my husband asked me to try a new recipe this year we'll see how that goes um, but spice peaches I've never had them, he's never had them, but he said they sounded really good. So we're gonna try some spiced peaches. I do have a house full of people that are going to be arriving uh, tonight and tomorrow. So I'm trying to get this knocked out today because I don't want my peaches to sit so long that I don't have time to do them. And uh, you know, I don't want my peaches to go bad. Even though the chickens and the pig would probably love them, I just don't want that to happen. Okay, my basket is empty. I am very pleasantly surprised because a lot of times when you buy a bushel of peaches, you really can't see the ones that are on the bottom and Nine times out of 10, I've always ended up having to throw a couple away because, and that goes for apples too, um, but I always end up having to throw just a few away because um, they're too far gone, and I say throw away. They either go to the chickens, the pig, the goats, or the compost pile because they don't care. <laughs> 
But this one, I didn't lose a single peach. Like all of them were able to be used. Now I am looking for 11 pounds of peaches. Of course, this is before we peel, chop, de-pit, all of that good stuff. So I've got a metal, I've got a metal bowl here and a scale. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that food scale on. Then I'm going to set my silver bowl onto the scale. I'm gonna reset it so that it goes back to zero. And like I said, we're looking for 11 pounds. So let's just add the pile in over here that looks really, really good. Perfect, all right, so we are there. That's 11 pounds of peaches in this one bowl right there, stacked all up. Now the next step that we're gonna do, and this is an important step, so do not miss this one. You're gonna take the peaches from the bowl and you're going to go ahead and wash them. All right, now, after you have washed your peaches, so these right here are my clean peaches. I do still have a few more in the sink, but I just don't want peaches falling out of the bowl here. So the next step is you're gonna want a separate bowl. Now, if you don't have chickens or goats or pigs, or you don't have a compost pile, obviously you could throw your peeling away. I'm going to save a few of the peach pits to dry out and try to plant some peach trees ourselves. The skins, I'm going to just give a nice little treat to the farm animals. All right, so you've got a big knife. We're going to cut it all the way around, open it up, pull that pit out, that seed. Just dropped one on the floor, but that's okay. And then I'm going to cut my halves in half. I've got my little paring knife here, and I'm just going to peel the skin away and put the put the peach that's been um, this where the skin has been taken off. Just put that right into your pot. Now, when you're making preserves, jams, jellies, anything like that, you really do need a heavy bottomed pot. Um, because if you have maybe a pot that's not as good, it can cause damage to your stove, it can cause damage to the pot itself, because it does take a little bit of time to make these. So use a nice heavy bottom pot. So I'm just following that skin line all the way down All right, one peach down. All right, so this is the last bit that I need to peel. And um, I wanted to just kind of share with you guys that when you are choosing peaches to do like a peach preserve or canned peaches, anything like that, you don't want to get the first fruit of the season because it's not going to be as sweet. You want to wait just a little bit, um, you know, give it time to sweeten up, let the sun do its thing. And this year, our area, I don't know about anybody else, but our area has just had a lot of rain um, to the point that it's been so cloudy that my tomatoes are just now turning red. <laughs> 
Um, they're not rotting, but they are just now turning from green to red. So, of course, um, I kind of teased my husband and I said, you watch. I said, they're going to all turn red during the 127 sale when we're all super busy and we don't have time to can them. But I'm hoping that they'll hold out at least till next week. Because next week um, will be a good week for me to can all of my tomato sauce and pizza sauce and pasta sauces and all those wonderful things. Um, but anyway, because of the rain, the peaches are extra juicy and the peaches are extra sweet. Um, and that sometimes happens when there is a lot of rain. So I am very excited about these. They smell so good. I haven't even added anything to them yet um, for them to become the preserve part. Now, I do wanna talk about that for a second. What is the difference between a preserve, a jam, or a jelly? Well, let's just say the easiest one, because that's what we're doing right now, is preserves. Preserves have um, sometimes a little less sugar. It depends on your taste and who makes it, but the, the main difference is, is gonna be your preserves are gonna have chunks of fruit. So it's more like a, almost like a topping rather than a jelly that you would spread out. Now a jam has still a little bit of fruit, but it's got a good mixture between um, chunks of fruit that may, might be a little bit less chunky um, and a little bit more jelly part to it than the um, preserves do. And a jelly is simply clear fruit juice that has been made into a stickiness um, for like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Um, and that's what a lot of times we'll use, I put a seed in there. Um, a lot of times I'll use the skins of like our apples uh, to make our jelly. And to be honest, I might even try it with some of these skins, because this is a lot of skin, and I know I told my chickens that they were gonna get a special treat, but I've got a lot of peaches here, so I can always split it up between them, or even after I make a peach jelly, um, you know, you can still use the skins and give that to your chickens. So that's the big difference. Now let's say that as I'm peeling these peaches, I do see like a few, because I have, as I've been peeling them, a few bad spots, that is something you wanna make sure that you take out. You cut it away as you're peeling them. You don't wanna put any bad spots into your preserves or jams or jellies or canned anything. And that goes with tomatoes, well, pretty much anything that you wanna can, green beans, all of it. You wanna be very, very careful not to add any um, thing that can grow bacteria in your cans because, or your jars, because then they're gonna go bad and you've wasted your time and your money and that's priceless right now. Yay, I'm all done. Look at that huge pot of peaches. How awesome is that? Woohoo! Now I'm just kind of coming in here and squeezing just to kind of mush them up a little bit. My hands are clean, don't worry. Um, but I'm just gonna mush these up just a little bit to kind of make them a little easier to process or cook down, I guess I should say. All right, so now that you have finished um, coring your, or de-pitting your peaches, peeling your peaches, mashing your peaches and getting them into your pot, now it's time to go ahead and add in the juice of one whole lemon. This is a medium-sized lemon, so um, this one will be plenty big. Before you cut your, your lemon, you want to kind of roll it around. That kind of gets the juices loose. I've got my juicer here, so I'm just going to open that up. Place that half lemon in there. Squeeze and get all that juice. I'm going to pull that lemon seed out because, of course, there we go. Squeeze it. And go ahead and do that other half. We're going to go ahead and give that a good stir. I have a really nice heavy duty um, wooden spoon here that I'm going to be stirring with. Next, we're going to add in six tablespoons 
or one packet of pectin. I just happen to have a tub of pectin. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in six tablespoons of that. You're doing this before your water or your peaches come to a boil. And this is with any fruit again. That's two, three, four, five, last one, and six. We're going to go ahead and stir all of that in. We're gonna turn that heat on. I've got it set because I have a gas top because um, we are going to want to bring this um, mixture to a boil. So I have it set between medium and high, a little closer to the high side for right now until it starts boiling, then I'll turn it down a little bit. Anytime you are making um, jam, jelly, preserves, anything like that. You always want to add your pectin in first when it's still cool. Then you want to add in your sugar once it comes to a boil. Okay, so my uh, mixture is starting to come to a boil. At this point, I'm gonna add in one tablespoon of butter. Um, and this is just to kind of help uh, stop that foam. I don't want any foam in my jam, so we're gonna throw this in. And now, once it starts coming up to a rolling boil, which means it's boiling consistent, consistently, um, even as you're stirring, then we're going to add in three cups of sugar because these are super sweet already and I don't want my jam or preserves to be too sweet. So I'm only gonna add in three cups of sugar. Now, I have already washed and um, boiled and taken care of my mason jars. So the prep work for the mason jars have already been done. I have two different sizes here. I have eight ounces, which is a half pint. Um, this is also eight ounces. This one's just kind of short and fat, and this one's kind of taller and skinnier. Um, and then I also have a full pint, which is uh, 16 ounces. All right, so this is boiling really, really nicely now. So it is time for us to add in that sugar. Now I am using the organic unprocessed sugar. So mine's a little bit darker, uh, but you can use white sugar if you want to. That's one, two, three, and I think I am gonna add in just a half a cup more, because that's a lot of peaches. Now at this point, you are going to need to stir. Do not leave it, it will burn. So make sure that you stir nonstop. Once it starts boiling again, you're gonna boil it for two minutes. portion of our peach preserves is done. We're going to switch over to a ladle. Now you are going to need a few tools when you're canning. First of all, you're going to need a canning funnel. This is not my favorite one and honestly because we have so much other stuff going on right now, um, I don't know where my favorite one is. But I am experienced enough to know that right here at the base of the rim, I'll show you up close, so here's the rim. So right here at the base of the rim, that's a half inch of headspace, and that is what I am looking for. So using the funnel, we're going to dip into our preserves. Yes, this part is messy, but you know, that's what soap and water are for. And I love making homemade jam for my family because 
don't know, it just brings me joy. I just, I, that's like, I think that's like my, not my love language, like, I, you know, I don't feel like acts of service is for me, but that's how I like to show my love and appreciation by cooking delicious things like this for my family to enjoy all year round. And I know that it's healthier for them because I know what's going into the jams and jellies. This is absolutely my son's favorite uh, preserve. He's not big on strawberry stuff. He'll eat it, but he's not big on it. His favorite is peaches, um, anything peaches. He just, he loves them. But if he is gonna be making like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, or if I'm gonna make him a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, he's gonna want peach jelly. And we've been out for a while, so he was really excited when he found out that this is what mama was doing today. Not the whole day, but a big portion of it, I guess. <laughs> So from this one batch, we ended up getting one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen half pints, two pints, and then I still had a little bit left over. Now I'm not worried about this because I'm just going to put a lid on it and put it right into the refrigerator. Colin will be able to enjoy that literally this afternoon. It'll cool down pretty quick. Our next step of the process is we're going to take a wet rag and we're going to wipe all of the rims of the can um, or the jars. And then we're going to add on our lids and our rings, pop them into the water bath canner, bring that water to a boil. We're gonna process it at 15 minutes and then they should be done. All right, so I have packed all of my peach jars, and one thing that I did forget to uh, video, and I forgot to mention it, is you are going to want one of these nice little gadgets, or even like a thin spatula, butter knife, anything that you can do to stick into your mason jar to get all of the air bubbles out. I'm so sorry that I forgot to show you guys that um, and mention it, but. You basically, literally, that's it. You just stick that into the jar. That goes for anything that you're canning and that just helps get all the air bubbles out. I have now filled my water bath canner so that all of my jars are covered. You cannot start your timer until the water is at a boil. So once that gets going and you'll kind of hear your cans jiggling, this isn't like the pressure canner where the thing starts jiggling and that's when you would start your timer. With this one, um, you just kind of have to keep listening or peeking at it to see if it's actually boiling. At that point, then you can start your timer. Um, and because I do have two pints in here, you have to do your timer for the largest jar. So with the two pints, we are actually gonna process these at 20 minutes. I don't know if I said that before. So once this gets boiling, we're gonna process it for 20 minutes. 